I am Stacy A. Cross, and there is no E in my, my name. name. I am Stacey A. Cross, and there is no E in my name. Comfort killers, whether you're watching now, you're watching in the future, you're watching later, night, evening, dusk, it's always the perfect time. I am so happy to bring to you another comfort killer from the stratosphere of entrepreneurship, from the stratosphere of changing the world, from the stratosphere of killing comfort. Today I have Isaiah Israel with me from I want to be successful.com. I love the damn I love the you I love the URL by the way. Hey, Welcome thanks. Isaiah. Welcome to the Comfort Killer show. Hey, thanks Stacy. Glad to be here. Glad to know that there's no E in your name. There ain't no damn E in it, man. <laughs> so Isaiah, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just tell my people who you are for, from the aspect of a quick bio. So you're an entrepreneur, real estate investor best-selling author, I love that before the word author, best-selling author from South Central LA, Bang Bang LA, huh? Boys in the Hood LA? Oh yeah, you know what, um, when I grew up, it was during the LA riots, uh, during NWA's time, mm. um, that was going on at that time, and so, you know, for me, it was just a matter of uh, trying to get out, you know, trying to be able to uh, empower myself and um, empower my community to be able to get out of um, certain bad conditions. And, and, you know, I think a lot of that adversity is honestly what brought me here today. You know what? I, lo I love that you said that and we started on this note because, you know, so you didn't fall victim to the conditions. You were just on your way out. Now, who do you attribute that to? Was it uh, a solid foundation and family? Uh, your mindset, mentors? How come you had a different perspective on getting out on, at that time? Yeah, ec excellent question. You know, uh, for me, just being a man of faith, really in all things, you know, of course, I always give God the glory uh, because with him, all things are possible. But, you know, um, I, I, had, I had some really strong first initial uh, mentors growing up. You know, uh, my very first business mentor uh, was my mother. She mm. asked, um, she was the first entrepreneur that I knew. She actually had a home-based daycare business where she took care of about 13 kids a day all on her own. And, um, you know, there was never a day that I saw I took a day off. Uh, there, was, there was no such thing as a sick day for my mom. And, you know, for a lot of kids growing up, a lot of times when kids grew up in the school system, they would come home and they would kind of have a couple hours to themselves because their parents didn't get home until after work was done at five. But whenever I got home, you know, I was a worker in my mom's business. I was helping, you know, read stories uh, to the kids. I was helping make their beds for nap time. I was helping to give them snacks for snack time. Like I was already being groomed to be uh, really a worker, a growth grader that understood that if you want to be able to take advantage of an opportunity, you have to be able to know how to create it from scratch. Mm. And so I, I would definitely attribute a lot of that uh, to my mother as well as my father because, you know, um, every day after work, my father would always read books. And so, you know, I, I think in some way that's kind of what kind of inspired me to really have a passion for reading books. Just watching my father do it quite naturally, I wanted to be like my father. And so, you know, I ended up having my own book, you know, the Valley Torn that lives at home with mommy and daddy. I love it. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, 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 had, a, I had some good family support growing up. You know, my first, um, my first real corporate mentor um, was my older brother. My older brother is, um, he's, he's almost 20 years older than me. I know I'm putting a little bit of age on you, bro. I know it's not 20 years to be exact, but I'm just rounding <laughs> off here. Um, you know, there were a lot of times where my mom, she would send me to his house for the summer. And during those summers, he would take me with him to his job every single day. 
And that was the, the first time that I really got to see somebody that I looked up to uh, interact with people, you know, in, in corporate business settings. And so, you know, uh, my brother, he used to work for Enron. Right now he works for Yahoo. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of those uh, experiences in my formative years that really carried over to a lot of the things that I do today, from my public speaking to just the way that I approach business in general. You know what? Uh, thank you for that. It's a great story to start with because, you know, we hear some, you know, we hear a lot of times that the family support was broken. Um, it, was dis it was disrupted. There was a struggle there. I had to run away from this. I had to run away from that. I didn't have the, the, the proper foundation. So it's actually a blessing to hear that even during all of these outside things happening, NWA, the riots, being from South Central, there was this hard, this hard evidence and data that proved that the family unit, and you said your mentor, your mother, your father, you've seen, you've seen the books being read, natural, okay? And then your older brother, it was like all of these pinpoints come back down to the traditional family unit and you're a man of faith. So I appreciate hearing that, especially when it comes from young black entrepreneurs, because we don't hear that enough. We, we hear the opposite. Absolutely. So I appreciate that. You know, and just yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was, I, I was just going to say, Stacey, to be honest with you, um, everything that you just said is the exact reason why I just decided to start this business. Mm. You know, um, I was working for years uh, in corporate America. Um, as an IT project manager. And there was a certain level of comfort that I had derived from that position, right? Because I spent my entire life pretty much being on a computer. Um, I always wanted to be working for some type of computer company, but it came to a point where I was working that job and I realized I don't want this to be my life. This is not my life calling. Even though, you know, I was always told as a kid, go to school, make good grades, get a good job. At some point, I just really hit a turning point where I said to myself, this is not what my life is going to be. I'm not just going to be somebody who's just going to sit up and just work behind a cubicle for the next 30, 40 years of my life, and that's it. And when I started the Urban Money Movement, you know, which was based upon me paying off $95,000 in student loan debt yeah. two years after I graduated from college, I envisioned really another black man that was on his way to jail and he would watch my YouTube video and it would help him turn his life around because he would not have otherwise have had maybe that type of direct mentor from that demographic. Yes. So by seeing me do it on video, then they would really be able to say, wow, you know what? This is possible. Wow. I never knew that this is what I could really aspire to do. This was something that was at one time disconnected from my community, but now you got guys that are rising up and they're, they're showing that this really is possible. You yes. know, just kind of going back to the family example real quick, you know, it was a real balance, Stacey. You know what I mean? I, 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 I definitely, um, I definitely um, affirm everything that you said, like as far as, you know, my mom's role in mentoring, my father's role in mentoring, my brother's role in mentoring. But it was definitely a balance. You know, as, as much as I had somewhat of a support system in my neighborhood, a lot of my inspiration on grinding it out and really becoming a comfort killer was I was dead serious about getting out of my neighborhood. I was mm. dead serious about getting out of my community. You know, um, I didn't make the best grades in middle school. I didn't make the best grades in high school. You know, I was put through remedial English. I almost didn't even make it uh, to high school. And, you know, the turning point really didn't come from me to college because that was the first time that I was actually outside of my community. I was actually yeah. outside of my city. Yeah. And I was willing to do whatever it took to stay out of my community. And so it was just that balance, having the support, but also coming from a certain background where failure literally is not an option. You know what, that's amazing that you said. So uh, just to, to give, keep our comfort killers abreast, whatever time you come in here, we are speaking with Zaya Israel, true comfort killer all around. Uh, I want to be successful.com, best-selling author. Congrats, by the way. And it's so funny to hear how we, we almost didn't make it. 
you know, but there was this powerful why behind us that kept us going forward. And, you know, what you have created, paying off $95,000 in student debt, you know, Dave Ramsey would clap his hand at you and say, what are you doing now, buddy? But, you know, I want to know, how did you do that? I mean, there's points in here in your, in your, in your story where you were homeless during your senior year in college. You were sleeping in the library, sleeping in abandoned homes. You were outside of your comfort zone. You were outside of the neighborhood, but then you realize that you're, you're not making it. So how do you keep going? Absolutely, because you know when, when you're in, in, in such a bad place, mm. so pain, you don't have any choice but to keep going. You know, one of one of the things that I feel like um, Tony Robbins is also often known for talking about is you know really the worst place that you can be at in your life is is in that comfort zone where you're you're just in the middle. You know what I mean? Where it's like uh, things are not going as great as they could be in an ideal world. But at the same time, you know, you're, you're not taking enough blows to where you just feel like you're literally at rock bottom. Yeah. But a lot of change comes from rock bottom. You know, um, to be honest with you, uh, Stacy, you know, when I was in college <laughs> and I went up when I was homeless in college, I had already had a job lined up for myself once I got out of college. I had already been. Um, accepted into a corporate position mm. before my senior year even begun. Mm. So uh, for me, that was really critical because even though I went through homelessness in my senior year, and even though I went through a certain level of poverty, I didn't even have uh, a dollar to my name literally to be able to buy a snack bar from places wow. and snack shops on campus. Yep. And, um, it was just me always thinking about, you know what, there's going to come a day where if I could just get through this, then the next level literally awaits me. And, you know, even though I was failing through classes in my senior year, again, I knew that failure was not an option mm. because the next level was, it was already set. Mm. And, you know, one of the biggest things that I would just encourage people to understand is that in your life, the next level is set even though you may not already see it, right? That's where the, the faith really kicks in. You have to know that there's a next level and an upper echelon of where your life can be and where you can go long before it's even there. Because if you just stay, you know, wallowing in, oh, well, look at what's happening to me today. I don't have this opportunity. I'm broke. You know, I don't have this going for me. I don't have that going for me. Then you're never going to have it going for you. You have yeah. to have the rich mindset long before the money comes in order for you to be able to get into that position. And so, again, how did I pay off $95,000 in student loan debt? Well, I knew I didn't want to be homeless for the rest of my life. I knew that I didn't want my finances to always be in disarray. And so once I got a job and I was working in corporate America, the very first year that I was working in that job, uh, my father was facing eviction in Los Angeles, uh, and my mother was in danger of foreclosing on her home, mm -hmm. right? My parents um, were separated by this time. And, you know, it was always kind of this unspoken rule or unspoken thing that I'm going to invest into you, my son, and pour everything that I can into you so that one day you yeah. can accomplish something and be able to give back to me. And so, you know, when I graduated from college, Stacey, and I had, you know, my first corporate job, like so many people that come out of college, I thought I had made it. <laughs> I thought I was balling. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I came out and I got my first salary offer and I was buying a big screen TV. I yeah. was buying the first couch for $1,000. I was traveling, going on vacations. And, you know, life and the serious of the seriousness of life at that point really didn't hit me until I got that phone call from my dad saying, Hey, I'm yeah. down. And out. Until I got uh, that phone call from my mom saying, Hey, I'm down and out. And then it went from me just taking a salary just as a, as a single black man, just, you know, kind of being this single eligible bachelor to, okay, I'm having to figure out a way now, to make this money stretch for myself 
as well as my family, and hey, oh wait, now I got these student loan bills yes. literally knocking on my door, and my student loan bills are now higher than the cost of my rent. You know what I mean? When I first had to start paying on my student loans, um, I had to pay more money towards that every single month and towards my entire cost of living expenses. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it was something where I just had to kill the comfort. I had yeah. to, I had to put myself in the gear and I had to say, you know what? I got to sacrifice. I got a side hustle. I just can't be comfortable with one check. I can't be going out and eating and doing everything that everybody else is doing. In that time period, when I was paying off that $95,000 in student loans, Stacy, I was eating peanut butter sandwiches mm -hmm. every day for lunch. I, I was not going out to Cheesecake Factory. I was not going out to all of these other flashy restaurants, even though I could have done it. Yes. Because I had a corporate salary that would suggest, okay, this is what you're supposed to do when you have the money. You know what I mean? When I, when I told people at my job at that time what my plan was to get out of all of the student loan debt, people just told me flat out, I think that that's stupid. Yeah. I think that's dumb that you're going to sacrifice all of these things and you're going to, you know, side hustle and sell things and try to start a business on the side to really be able to pay off all of the student loan debt. But then lo and behold, I start a business two years later and the business model is me making enough money from that business to recoup every single dollar that I spent on student loans. So I went my mess, I turned it into my message. And this business allowed me to cash flow and reimburse every dollar that I lost on my student loans. Wow. I mean, first of all, you <laughs> said a lot of things there. And, um, and I love it because you're making it so easy for me, is it? And the um, first thing you said was mindset. Okay, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. You said, you know, you got to enrich the mindset. Reminds me, when you were speaking so eloquently about the next level, Right. I, I thought about, of course, the alchemist. Okay. You know, I believe 100% that we have to plant seeds in the dirt. You said, Hey, listen, you learn from these low times, these dark times. When we plant seeds, we don't go plant them in the sunshine outside on the ground. We go deep inside the darkness of the dirt. We continue watering those seeds until it becomes this beautiful blossoming flower, which we intended. So that intention and that faith is there. So now you're in your corporate gig. You're all smiles. You're doing what you need to do as a selfish young man. Right. You know, you're taking the vacations. You know, you're not, you're not even worried about anything. You're getting those big screen TVs and that's so selfish of us. And until that real hard thing hits us. And you said it was the phone call from your parents. Hey, listen, I'm going through this. And then it brings it back. You revolve around back to understanding what they have provided and what your unspoken your unspoken dedication and delegation to them has become. Now you become less selfish, is what I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, less selfish and saying, you know what? I need to now make sure that they're okay because I'm good, okay? What I think I'm good, right? The corporate gig, the IT, the IT gig. I'm, I think I'm good, but now I have to get better. Right. You become unselfish in, in, these, in making it work. What you said was amazing too, where you said, man, you, talk, you told these people, at the gig, hey, listen, this is what I'm gonna do. They turned around and practically laughed at that idea because right. they're like, man, you got it. We got it all. Look at us. We, the paychecks are coming in bi-weekly, weekly, whatever the case may be. We're good. We're gonna laugh at you for starting a business, but you had a different plan. It is to reimburse, guys. I'm just, I'm just, you know, summarizing what you said here. It because it's so powerful reimburse the intent of that business to reimburse everything that I got to spend out now for this. But a lot of people are not going to like this hard cold data here that you just said here. You got to sacrifice. Right. And you sacrifice, you said I'm eating peanut butter, okay? And jelly sandwiches. If I have a big gold 95,000, you know, it's weighing on your shoulder. Now when you sent your last payment in for that 95 grand, how did it feel, man? so freaking amazing i couldn't even put it in words oh I, my god it, it, you know it, it, it's one of those things and you know I, as a comfort killer stacy and I, I know that you can you know totally relate obviously because you are the comfort killer <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's when you really put your mind to something and you go all out mm. you just you you go all in yeah you mm. know, 
you 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 started with the intent to reach a certain goal yes but you get so wound up into the journey that you don't even think anymore about the finish line you know what i mean you just invest <laughs> and you, you 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 put in you sacrifice and you begin to appreciate the journey itself. Mm. Sometimes when the finish line comes, you appreciate everything uh, out of the journey and mm. when it's out of you, then the fruits of the finish line itself. You, oh so, my God. You know, when, when I paid off that 95,000, um, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. I, 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 I never, you know, I, I went into it, obviously with the intention to pay it off. Yes but there were, there were so many people that were like, I'm going to be holding on to my student loan debt for a lifetime. You know what I mean? I'm never going to have this paid off. This is how people were viewing their situation. Mm -hmm. And putting it on you. Exactly. Putting right. their situation on me. You know what I mean? And people used to always tell me, and I'm talking about family members, friends, you know, well, why don't you go back to school so that way you can just defer on them. You know what I mean? Look at what this person's doing. Look yeah, at what yeah. This person's smart. This is deferring it and that wasn't my box of smart if, if, if that's how you define smart and that's your smart box i don't want to be smart right and you know um that's the real reason why i even came out with my book stacy um not to switch gears switch it with the valedictorian that lives at home with mommy and daddy um it it, it, it speaks about just that there's so many people that have like the smart box in their brain um based upon things that they learn in school and what yeah. they said that they get out to the real world where now it's time to really hustle um and they don't know how to do it you see what i'm saying because the academic life is so much different than the professional life but yes. going back to the initial question of um when i paid off my ninety five thousand dollars on the very last payment how did it feel you know um it felt like a moment in my life where, you know, if, if that was my last day on earth, um, I would have died obviously a happy man, not because of the goal that was achieved, but because of the sacrifices and really the mental toughness mm. that went into aspiring to goal in the first place, you know? And I think that a lot of times that's what people don't understand you know, everybody wants to be somebody else. Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Everybody wants to, you know, make a certain amount of money. You know, it's not so much about the particular goal itself. I could have did anything. I could have started a business. I could have wrote a book. I could have done so many different things, but it's about what that particular goal makes out yes. of Yes. When you stretch yourself and you get outside of your comfort zone, and you learn your real you. Like when you're in your comfort zone, you don't know your real you because every part of you has not even uh, seen the light of day, right? You, you've been in darkness this whole time and you have not even had access to sunlight for the seeds of your own success to really be able to grow. And so, you know, that day when I paid off my student loan debt, honestly, I was in such disbelief that I just went towards the very next goal, which was starting my own business. I didn't even, I, you know, I, I, before the debt was paid off, I always said to myself, I'm gonna have this week long party of just being out of student loan debt. Yeah. <laughs> but when the day happened, wow. it was so surreal and I was at such a high from it that I took that energy and I just went towards the next goal, which was starting up my business, the Urban Money Movement LLC. I love this. The reason why I love this because, man, you're so powerful. I love, first of all, again, I'm going to backtrack a bit, okay? Um, the journey, you spoke about the journey. And yes, I do agree with you there 100 percentedly that the journey is more powerful than that finish line. Because right. once you arrive at the finish line, you become a whole different person right. and the goals change. Right. Uh, Practicing and, 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 and um, training for a marathon, I, I'm reading a marathon book, and they always said, you know, why do you even sign up for the next marathon? It's so brutal. It's so, like, excruciating. It's so – and these – you know, what I'm seeing with the testimony is, is that they don't care about the finish line, that what happens during the race, during the actual marathon, 
is they're only looking for that next, the next marker, the next mile marker. And that's the beautiful experience. When they get to the finish line, they only remember when they were at 26.2. They will remember when they're at mile, <laughs> mile five, mile whatever. Right. So they don't really see the finish line and they don't really talk about the end because that end, they're signing up for the next marathon. They're signing up for the next 5K. They're signing up for their next thing. They don't stay right there. They never really end. And what yeah. you said here is that by the time you said that, you're going to have a week-long party, yeah, my ass, because by the time you get to it, by the time you get to it, it has, it has made you into the person that you needed to start that business. Yeah. That, so you've learned along the way the sacrifice, the discipline, the effort required you know, and all of that teaches you, and you said the next level, and that's, I'm going to keep on that theme because it's so important. You set yourself up for the next level. It was already there. You just have to keep going. Absolutely. And, and that's a beautiful thing, and the goals change now. Now it's a bigger goal. Now I'm going to start a business encompassing this, and I want to talk about your goals. Okay. Huge goals here. It says here, take 200 people out of poverty right. and change their lives forever. In business, right. this is called the get out of the hood challenge. Okay? Absolutely. <laughs> then you said here you want to enjoy regular mini retirement periods throughout my life where I'm traveling to foreign countries, performing my true calling of serving other people. What I wanted to say about that is, you know, I have a, a, a mentor of mine right now, and I just, I text him uh, Memorial Day weekend. I say, hey, what's up? He says, I'm recharging. And I said, man, that's awesome. He was in San Juan. I said, he said, I'm recharging now. And the idea is, you know, once you take yourself out, you go to foreign countries, you start traveling, you start getting more inspired, you know? And, and I read somewhere that Deepak Chopra, okay, he takes a month off, right. takes off the phone, takes off this. And, but when you talk about what is conventional when it comes to entrepreneurship, go every day, hustle, hustle, hustle. Don't take a vacation. Don't even look the other way. Keep going. Don't even say hi to your family. Just keep going. And it's a miss. It's a disconnect in what we're getting taught about right. this entrepreneurship and what we actually need in right. that next level and that next step. And the last thing was become a great father to five children. Now, how many do you have? Right now I have zero. And so for me, oh that's a part of the next level thinking where I'm not there yet, but it's already mapped out in my you're, brain. You're already building up to that, that, that father figure that you know is the next level. You're already learning the things you just put by, just by putting that as a goal every day, it's in your mind. You're already planting those seeds that make you a great father already to many. Talk to me about the 200. Well, yeah, so absolutely. So um, right now, you know, on social media, um, in my Facebook fan page, my YouTube channel, my Instagram, the Urban Money Manager, um, I really spread a message all throughout the world that, again, it's possible for you to start from the bottom and to see. And, you know, I, I kind of want to segue this into a point that we were making a little bit earlier because I couldn't leave it untouched. Yes. You um, my discomfort, Stacy, is my competitive edge. You know, when I went to college, um, I've, I've never really promoted myself as being the smartest guy. Because like I told you, you know, when I was in middle school, um, I was failing out. When I was in middle school, I was in remedial English. And so I never really viewed myself as being the smartest guy, but I always was confident in myself that I was willing to go through a certain level of discomfort that other people were not willing to go through. You know, when I went to college, um, I went to uh, two private universities, in fact. And, you know, I didn't know really what I was getting myself into at the time with the student loan debt. I was just trying to get out of the hood, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so um, I started my first two years at the University of San Francisco, and then I transferred over uh, to spend the remainder of my college career at Baylor University. Mm -hmm. And when I went to both of these institutions, you know, I, I saw people and I had friends among people that, you know, came from very affluent backgrounds. You know, I, I went, you know, to school with people who, you know, it wasn't a big deal for their fathers to have been investment bankers or top mm -hmm. accountants or um, 
high paying entrepreneurs, those type of things. And I always understood, you know, I think that even though it, it's, it's so good that they come from a certain type of upbringing and they have such a great support system, there's a certain level of hunger mm. from my background that's not teachable. You know, your father could be worth millions of dollars, but he cannot buy you the type of hustle that was already instilled in me yeah. really since birth. And so, you know, just to kind of go back to where we're at today with this get out of the hood challenge, it's all about showing people how you don't need a college education to become successful. We know that because we've seen billionaires that have done it without one. Yes. You need to have the highest level of IQ. In fact, Warren Buffett has said numerous times that if you have a super high IQ, you know, you could give a lot of it away and still be wildly successful. Yes. Um, what, what I show people is that literally your discomfort is your competitive edge. Ooh. You could take all of my money. You could take my house. You could take my book. You could start me with from square one. But what you can't take away from me is my discomfort. When I lose my competitive edge, which is my hunger, that's when I've lost everything. Yes. That, that, that competitive edge is what's allowed me to get everything that I have today. And so the get out of the hood challenge, this is my calling to be able to go out and touch 200 people that have been through what I have been through and to be able to show them, listen, it's possible that you can succeed. Yes. I know that maybe you, you might have grown up where you were given a life narrative that, you know, maybe your life was just going to be you being, you know, um, an athlete. Like, that's the only ticket out, right? And that's no disrespect to athletes, but I'm saying that that's not everybody's destiny, right? Yes. Not everybody's going to be LeBron. Not everybody's going to be the next MJ. But when you come from a certain background, that's the only narrative that you know. And so I, my mission is to just show people smart is the new cool. Mm. Um, I think that one of the biggest things, as you know, that happened really during our era is when um, Obama was elected president. Yes. Um, and it wasn't so much about what Obama did in office that, that, that changed the game as much as just what that level of accomplishment represented. Yes. You know, what I, mean? um, I, I, I like a quote that, that Jay-Z said the best when Obama got elected. He said, when Obama got elected, it made the gangster become less relevant. Mm. So uh, it ushered in now a new culture that showed that it was possible to be, you know, really living in an urban community or, you know, to come from certain backgrounds and, and you can make it to the highest levels. And so I'm on a mission right now, Stacey, to take 200 people and to be able to give them all of the training, um, the skills, the mentorship, the guidance, you know, ju just everything that they need to be able to get out of poverty. Yes. And poverty, in this case, is not only economical, mm -hmm. it is mental, it is spiritual, spiritual. Yep. it is emotional. I'm on a mission to take 200 people and completely be able to change their lives around. You are a blessing. Oh, well, thank you. To the universe um, in many more ways than, than you would think. Um, and I know you know that. Uh, we, I was just having a discussion on education and how important one may think or, or not think that it is. Um, every day I'm learning more. Personal development is my key. I love it so much. I believe that we have to be self-reliant and, and self-understanding to know that we could grow always expanding and expansive. Right. Um, Smart is the new cool. Yes, I love, I love that terminology here. And you know what I love more is that I, I just spoke to another person, young black entrepreneur, 160 million he sold his manufacturing company in China for. Wow. Just spoke to another one, wrote a book, very young. 
what I'm seeing here is a new elevation. And, and it happened before. I think this was maybe the empowerment movement of the 50s and 60s, right? right? Where, you know, you would look at someone and they were knowledgeable in all aspects. They were reading. They dressed they dressed good, right? They felt good about who they were. And I believe that that's coming back around. And with people like you, the, the urban money manager, that we nope. could take, oh man, look at that. <laughs> yeah, the urban, I hope people could actually get that shirt because it's actually very dope. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, you're, you're talking about this, you know, this poverty being a mindset. It's economic, it's spiritual, it's physical. You're absolutely right. And, and what makes a person get up and, and confidently say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my life. I'm going to make sure that I do it for the five kids I don't have yet. I'm going to already plant these seeds right now. And with the help of, of you, and I know that what you're doing in this universe is correct because I feel it. It's not something that I, I just, I don't need to know it. I feel that this is what's going to happen. And, and that's why I'm here, you know, to push, to push the envelope a little bit because guess what? They said I wasn't supposed to be here. You know, the, the, the Tony Robbins already did it. The Zig Zigs already did it. These people are already here. Now I'm here to push the envelope because guess what? When I say it, maybe someone will listen. They didn't listen to you, Tony. They couldn't hear, understand you. But when I say it, maybe that's the voice that they needed to hear. And same thing with you. Right. Uh, absolutely. Because, you know, um, sometimes the messenger is more important than the message. Wow. Some, sometimes um, it's, it's, it's all about who you have to model yourself after. You know yes. what I mean? For a lot of us um, that, that grew up in, in certain backgrounds, like I'll just take Los Angeles for, for mm -hmm. example. You know, um, I was the only black man in my community to even go to college. Wow. Uh, out, of, out of my neighborhood. And a big part of that was because of the fact that we did not have um, certain role models. We didn't have certain models. Yeah. Um, the models that we did have, they led us in other directions. Yes. You know, so if, if, if we were growing up, I, I could remember having dope fiends in my neighborhood as very close friends. And so, you know, when, when you kind of have that as a model, you are who you associate with, right? Yes. You're the average of the top five people that you spend your time around. So quite naturally, you know, if you grow up around drug dealers, gangsters, you know, um, people that are in different arenas than what your life really should become, by default, you're going to kind of be influenced and impression by them as a career path because that's all that your mind has connected to success mm. right? if, if you see nino brown pull up in your hood and everybody else is driving a pinto and he's the only guy that that that's 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 got the money and it has everything else that you know, mainstream society mm -hmm. uh, identifies as success, that becomes your baseline to success. Absolutely. When, when, when I grew up, um, I didn't really know about Tony Robbins, not so much because of the fact that I would not have, his message would not have resonated with me because it does to this very day. Mm -hmm. but because of the fact that I didn't think that I could be Tony Robbins because Tony Robbins didn't look like me. Ah. There was no South Central Tony Robbins. Yes. There was no South Central Zig Ziglar. Yes. And that's the reason why I went on a mission to do what I do today. That's, that's the reason why I had to get rid of the safety net. I had to get out of my job and I had to evangelize this message across the world because I wanted to be that guy. I knew how hard it was growing up to not have that type of uh, Jim Rohn type figure mm -hmm. in your, your neighborhood. And I said to myself, you know what? If it's not in my neighborhood, this is God's way of showing me that I gotta be the guy. Mm. If it's not that guy, it means that, that, that the universe is waiting on me to be that guy. Yes. You know what I mean? and, 
and, and that's really the important distinction. You know what I mean? A lot of times it's really easy to complain and, and, and feel sorry for what you don't have. But sometimes that becomes the biggest blessing because that's the opportunity yep. for you to become the trendsetter of every blessing that you would have wanted to others in your community. And so I, my, my focus is just being that model. You know what I mean? I, nobody, I, don't, I, I want it to be where in 20 or 30 years from now, right, even much long, uh, shorter before then, I want every impoverished man, woman, and child to not be able to say, I didn't think that this was possible for me because I didn't see somebody like me doing it. Powerful. I, I want to I wanna remove the disconnect. You know what I mean? I know what it's like to, to, to watch people, you know, in other uh, communities make it, but you don't feel like you can make it. And I want to just cut that out altogether. You don't have no excuse now because now right. you see in our community not only making it, but making it and giving back and showing you how to make it too. So powerful. I'm here like, uh, you know, what? this is one of the best interviews I had. Number one, because it aligns with everything that I believe, like wholeheartedly, um, you know, me coming up from pretty much zero from being a gambling addict uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to creating this, um, to this lifestyle movement. And, and what you're saying, you know, you mentioned everything that I'm asked. I, I take notes on everyone and I had to go to the back for you. <laughs> drawing mind maps here uh, because yeah, it's so powerful what you say. And I have no doubt in my mind that you are here for that specific reason. Like all those things that happened as a child, everything, just seeing what you've seen, just building up to this thing here and what you're creating, uh, being the urban money manager, just taking people out of the poverty. And I love what you said. It's all around that poverty piece. Now, yeah. I mean, I, I shouted out your website here. I want to be successful.com. Wanna W A N N A. That's what I love about it. I want to, I want to be successful.com. Uh, where can, where can uh, people find you? I know your book is on Amazon. We're going to plug it here. The links are here. Uh, comfort killers. Uh, just please click it. We need to, we need to read more books like this involved with more people just like you with, with your message here. Where can people find you? Well, I made it easy for, for your audience, Stacey. I, I, I came here uh, bearing gifts. And so for anybody that wants to find me, you can actually go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash comfort killers. And on that link, I have put together uh, really a special package for every single comfort killer that wants to be able to advance in their career. So when you go to this link, you're actually going to be able to have the opportunity to go through a seven-day course with me all for free. It's going to be a seven-day email course with me all for free for you to be able to uh, accelerate your career to the next level in 90 days for less. I just wanted to really do that off the top just for you because I appreciate everything that you do, Stacey. Thank you so much. It's Bitly. Um, slash comfort killers, bit.ly slash comfort killers. Yo, I'm I'm amazed. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna ante that up because now now that you've made it so appetizing for me, and I I love I love your strategy. By the way, you're amazing. You know, awesome. more people should be like that. Think things through, strategize with it in, in order to help more people. Uh, and I have a mastermind that we do weekly and we got to get you scheduled on the mastermind so you could speak to the people in the group and we're going to get them on this link. We're going to get them to advance. We're going to push each other's mission forward. We're going to get them uncomfortable. So yeah. after this guys, we're the, the interview, by the time this interview is released and published, you will have the link to the mastermind there. You have the link to the bit.ly. You have the link to the book. You have, it's, it's going to be amazing. So ladies and gentlemen, comfort killers all around. We have made it so easy for you to change your life. So easy for you to get involved. So you could have, never say it wasn't because I seen some, seen someone else do it. You can never say that the tools and resources wasn't there for you, that the opportunity wasn't there. And that's exactly what Isaiah is saying here is that we're going to make it so easy for you to change your life because his mission is huge. My mission is huge. And when they collide, when they symbiotically collide, 
we're here to help more people. So my mission in life is to teach millions how to get uncomfortable, and you have helped me advance my mission today. Hey, well, thank you for that. And actually, one of the things that I hadn't spoke of as of yet is part of what I do to actually help kind of guide and mentor people further. You know, because a lot of times people could check me on my social media, Facebook, the Urban Money Manager, YouTube, the Urban Money Manager, um, Instagram, the Urban Money. Uh, there's, there's so much um, content that I put out there every single week. One of the things that I do um, on a regular basis, it's called um, the Live Success Call. And on these Live Success Calls, um, it's a free streaming call where I will discuss one major career topic every single call and then after i am done with that topic i will open up the floor for uh on the spot q a for whoever's on the call so i've done previous calls about how i became a best an instant bestseller uh, yes. on Amazon for my book um i broke all of that down on a free call i broke down on a free call um how i got into real estate here in north austin you know, I've, I've went um, and showed people how I make money using Facebook, how I make money on YouTube, how to get yourself set up on an e-commerce platform. I have all of that available on my uh, live success call. And so really, a lot of people connect with me through that. Now, the next level up from there, uh, you know, I've been on, 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 a, on a personal mission for this year, Stacey, uh, to be able to mentor uh, 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 an exclusive group of people on a weekly basis, showing them step by step how I accomplished pretty much everything that I've ever accomplished, whether it was paying off $95,000 in student loan debt, yeah. whether it was starting my own business, whether it was getting into real estate, whatever the case may be, um, I opened up my own weekly mentoring program called the Winner's Circle. Mm. And so in the Winner's Circle, people actually have access to me uh, as well as my entire network every single week where I will meet with them, you know, through a live face-to-face -face video call, just like how I'm doing with you right now. Yep. We will literally uh, pull up the hood of their life and anything that they are trying to get figured out, I walk them through the process step by step. So say somebody wants to uh, become a business owner and they say, hey, Urban Money, uh, you know, I want to set up a business um, making money online. How do I get started? In that call, I show them the steps step by step. Very nice. Somebody gets on the call and says, hey, Urban Money, you know, um, I want to be able to pay off my student loan debt or my credit card debt. Yes. Or, you know, wh whatever type of debt I may hold, how do I do it? How do I improve my credit score? And I literally will give them every single step That's it. in that call. Because again, my mission is to make every single resource available at your disposal. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, 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 I kind of view myself, Stacey, as kind of um, the Robin Hood of- I love it. I love it. That's <laughs> how, I love it. You know why I love it? Because yeah. it takes away- the fluff of the quote unquote click funnel culture, right? Yes. You have provided so much value on your live calls to a point where it's like, wow, yeah. what, what next? You've given, yeah. you've provided so much. And that's what we do with our mastermind calls. No holes barred. I'm here yeah. to tell you what works, what doesn't work. Okay. Yeah. Cause I've tried it. Everything that I'm going through things like uh, the persuasion techniques for, you know, if you want to get a yes in sales, okay? Uh, but these are the things that people will charge rightfully, right? Rightfully 13,000 for. Hey, I'm giving it to you for free. That's how much value I'm ready to give because I know I need you to get better in your life. This is not a scam and a scheme. So I love the approach. And now you get to the winner's circle, it's one-on-one, -on -one, step by step. And people, you know, that's why I roll with winners. I roll with comfort killers because we're not in it for that, that mask of value. We're not in it. We're in it to, to, to really accomplish our mission, to achieve our mission. And the way we know how, because we've done it. And we're like, wow, if people know how easy it is, if they just follow these processes, I want to go ahead and help the world. And the universe is going to match that and reward that. I don't have to worry about that. We're going we're gonna to get back. 
So I love what you said here and the live call, um, we're gonna, if you give me information on that, I'm gonna put that in the, the notes as well, guys. By the time this is released, you will have enough information and resources to take the next necessary action in your life and business to improve yourself, okay? And that's what this is about, to improve yourself, to get you to that next level, that next echelon, to scratch at that, because we want everyone in the same, I want people lateral, okay? You know, I want people to come up and let's walk together. I don't want to always look at you and just give you that little piece of information that may or may not assist you. No, I'm not in it for that. I'm in it, hey, let's, let's all move up. Let's move a whole generation up. Let's move a whole family up. Let's move the whole unit up and let's get better together. So I love what you're doing and I, I think that's such a blessing and I love hearing it from other people because we're on the same approach. I'm giving it all. Yes, and, and I, I'm sorry, Stacey. You, you're about to keep me here all day just talking. <laughs> You know, it, it, it's so, it, it, you know how it is. It, it, it is so refreshing to be able to connect with people that have the same passion, the same drive, and the same tenacity and ambition that you have to really be able to change the world. And, you know, um, one of the things that, that's so key and a core element of, of, of what I really share with people is that, you know, you can have all of the talent in the world you could have there's so many people that have you know so much creativity so many great ideas and concepts but the thing that that they're lacking is the steps mm -hmm. you know um i i just got to be honest with you and this goes back to my personal story you know i've been speaking in front of large audiences of people since i was five years old and um you know, that was something that my mother always instilled in me. Yes. And, you know, it was one of those things where I did it for so long, I kind of took the skill itself um, for granted. Yes. And so it wasn't until I really got into this online personal development space mm -hmm. where I started looking at other guys and I started saying, well, man, if they can do this, I could speak too. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It, if this person is making this type of money, you know what I mean? And, and speaking is not even their strong suit. Yep. How much more do I need to get off of my behind? Yes. And really make it happen. And you know, one, one of the, the main things that frustrated me, Stacey, as, as I was really evolving myself to, to where I am now and where I continue to push, is that when I looked at the difference at the time, even to this day, from me and everybody else who's already out there doing it is they understand the systems and the processes to success. Mm. They, don't, they, don't, they, they understand that you have to have more than just a pretty face. You have right. to have more than just, you know, good speaking ability. You have to have more than just whatever gift or talent that God has blessed you with. You have to be able to take that gift, take that talent, and channel it in a way where you're using it in a system. When, mm -hmm. when you're seeing people that are killing it on social media, killing it through e-commerce, killing it in all of these other platforms, they understand the system of how to play the game. And so, you know, for all of you guys that are watching, you gotta know the system. Don't feel like just because you got the talent and you got the gift and you're the man in your local community, yep. all of that is and dandy but you're never going to really kill it until you start understanding the systems of how the game is played and that's the reason why i even open up the winner's circle because i want to show people what those systems are right. that were never told to us before in our life i love it i mean 100 percent. you said the word system processes these are behind anything i mean when i study a lot of corporations and um, one thing that we always learned about entrepreneurship is that it's a wild field, you know, just run off in the wilderness. It's wild out here. You know, don't, there's no structure. I hate structure. I hate my boss. I hate this one. I hate, but then we realize that we build companies and we put systems and we outsource the people with discipline and we, and we do the exact things that we're fighting against. Right. And, and then, so, and there's a system for everything. There's people that have created these systems and are using these systems and are having results. But guess what? 
They probably want you to be the wild boy, to, th to not understand the system. So you're, you're wasting a lot of energy and effort when things could be applied very strategically and systematically to, to make it easier, this process, and to make you get more successful at a faster rate. You know, I had to learn these things and that, that's what added time. And now I'm trying to decrease time for people to understand, hey, let's implement some systems very fairly quickly even in paying off debt, what's the systems look like? If you pull out some, some money, don't, it's not even there. You pull it out from a systematic way and approach. So you're not even handling the money at the end. The money just goes straight to the lender. It just take it out just like a deduction out of your check. You know, so there's things that, that, that we need to build on. There's things that we need to learn and things that we already learned that we're willing to share with people because of our mission and our success. And, and just to let you know, just to round it up here, um, I appreciate you. I, I, I believe 100% that you are on a path of, you're just blazing it. And you're, you're setting a trail that millions are going to follow. And we're, we're going for the billions. I learned that you know, we got to up our goals sometimes. So it's like, you know, you know, I started off with hundreds of thousands. Now, you know, we're, we're aiming for the billions. We're aiming to shift a consciousness of the universe, this globe. It's, it's a mental shift and it could start with one person. And you sound, you found that person to be you. And, and I appreciate that. And I love all your references with getting outside of your comfort zone, you know, learning to become who you are because you're not that person within that comfort zone. And, um, and in Comfort Killers, I know you're feeling the same energy I am. And that's why we brought this, <laughs> this crazy, superb, just dominant figure here to let you know that it, you could be that person too. And you could, you could follow the steps and there's easier ways to do it. And maybe you've been taught the wrong things. And maybe you're listening to conventional and traditional wisdom, but we're here right now to tell you that there's a different way and there's an alternative approach. And maybe you, you have the tools already inside of you, right? The resources, the gift, the talent, but maybe we can apply some systematic approach to that and get better day by day. So I appreciate you being here again, the urban money manager, love your name, Isaiah Israel, show them the shirt again. Uh, again, everything will be linked up appropriately. I'm going to get, get you in the mastermind call. And, uh, and I know our comfort killers are going to appreciate that. And you're going to be able to give us the gift and then tell us where we need to go. And the approach is going to be right, right on. I love doing this with people that I honor and people that I respect because it's a mutual thing. And uh, again, Isaiah, I appreciate you investing time. I no longer try to spend time. I, I always want to invest time with people. It's how I get things back in a symbiotic collaborative mode. I appreciate you 100%. I appreciate you, Stacy, and, and I'm just going to be flat out and frank with you right now. If this is our only time, will we ever collaborate? We're doing a disservice to the world because mm. so much energy uh, that you and I both bring to the table man, we're so much more powerful together. And so yes. um, I, I don't know about you, but again, when I'm thinking about next level, you're a part of that. Oof. And I recognize very humbly that I cannot weave in the next level without you and others like you to even show me what that next level entails. Wow. And so thank you so much for being able to um, have me really um, as a part of your life's journey. I don't look at this as a show. I don't just look at this as a moment in time. This is your life's journey. You could have done anything else with your life. You've chosen to spend this uh, period of your life with me right now. Yes. And I know how valuable that is. So I just um, thank you. And I encourage your audience to kill your comfort. Whatever it is, kill your comfort. If you have not yet killed your comfort, you're not really living. It's very easy for you to be breathing air, but you're not really living. And so for those of you that are still comfortable, the best Tell thing, Tell the best, best thing I'm telling you, <laughs> if, you're, if you are still comfortable, the best thing that I could encourage and hope for you to do is for you to find something that you are so driven by, that you love so much, 
that it takes the disease of comfort out of your life disease you heard it here folks comfort killers if you're still comfortable man it's a disease it's a disorder come on we need to work together and we are here uh Isaiah again beautiful experience with you you're absolutely right i wouldn't invest it any other way you are now a part of my life journey your journey to success is my journey to success and vice versa ladies and gentlemen i am stacy a cross and there is no E in my name until next time, comfort killers. I appreciate you. Go out there and remember, remain uncomfortable. You're done.